Welcome to the second video in our Understanding Pet Rat Genetics series. Shameless plug, but this video is from Blooming Tales Rottery in Overland Park. The Facebook page and website are linked down below. This video will be discussing how to read and write the shorthand genetic codes in rats and what the codes are for these basic color loci. This video isn't going to include the C. locus because it's so big and complicated. It'll get its own video. Don't worry if this stuff doesn't click right away. A huge portion of learning genetics is just practicing, practicing, and more practicing. A lot of it is just memorizing what all of this stuff means. I've studied genetics and medical issues in rats for three years off and on before I ever even started to breed, and I've continued to learn since. This isn't an overnight skill, and that's perfectly okay. In the previous video, we learned about what a chromosome, locus, and allele have to do with genetics and how they're all interconnected. We also learned about dominance and recessives, but we're going to do a quick refresher anyway. After all, this stuff is all about repetition. So if you remember, a chromosome is the main genetic vehicle for genetic information. It's where all of that genetic info is kept. It's our car. A locus is a set point on that chromosome that does not vary from animal to animal. A locus is like our cup holder. Now, an allele or a gene are like the cups that go into that cup holder. They're the specific genetic information that is telling the locus exactly what, is what it's going to look like or control. A dominant gene is a type of allele that only needs one copy on its locus in order for it to be seen. This is also known as being expressed or the animal's phenotype. A recessive gene is a type of gene that needs two copies of the same gene on the same locus in order to be expressed or seen. If a recessive locus only has one copy of that mutated allele, then the allele is being carried. This means that the animal is not visually showing this mutation, but it does have a 50-50 shot of passing that mutation on to offspring. So if we're looking at our cups here, this big cup, that's our dominant gene on this locus, okay? So whatever this cup means, that is what that animal looks like. Now, if we looked at this like it was a recessive locus, that big cup means that there's only one copy of this little mutated allele, which means that that animal is only carrying that mutated allele, but it does have that 50-50 shot of passing it on. Dominant genes cannot be carried and thus a direct parent must have that dominant gene as well. But we learned in our last video that some dominant genes are hypostatic, which means that we may not be able to visually see that gene until the correct terms are met. Hypostatic dominants are passed down to offspring just the same as any other dominant. But how are all of these written? So dominant alleles are written with a capital letter. So our example rat this time is going to be a Russian blue agouti carrying mink which is written like this. These letters aren't going to make too much sense right now, but that's okay. The simple color loci abbreviations will be explained later on in this video. We just need to know how to read these sort of right now. Learning which loci is recessive and which are dominant is really down to just memorizing them. The A locus or the agouti locus is a little bit different than most due to the fact that it has both a dominant and recessive allele that can change the phenotype of the animal on the same locus. But since this animal is agouti, we know that she has at least one dominant agouti allele, which is referenced here by the capital A because it's a dominant gene. Dominant genes are referenced by capital letters, but she also carries black, which is referenced by this lowercase a, Recessives are written as lowercase letters. She's also a Russian blue, which means she has two copies of the recessive Russian blue gene, which is referenced by the double lowercase d's right here. But she's also carrying a copy of the recessive mink. And technically, it looks a lot like the same format as a goody. So why is it different? The biggest difference? The M locus is a recessive locus. So that means that this lowercase m is the one that's showing the mutated allele. If no mutated recessive allele is present in that specific cup holder, you will see the capital letter, which is why we have that capital M right there. 
So when an animal is carrying a recessive gene, you will see one capital letter and one lowercase letter. Remember when I said the A locus is a little bit different? Well, what happens if we use a standard dominant locus? So for this one, we're going to use Perl. And for this, the mutated dominant allele is actually referenced here by the capital letter. This lowercase letter means that that mutated allele isn't present because in this locus, there's only one kind of mutated allele. So in cases of dominant shorthand, it's actually flip-flopped from the recessive shorthand. Before we dive into these other color loci, we're going to talk about the A locus just a little bit more. Every rat is either agouti or black-based. Every single stinking one. When you hear terms like Russian blue, chocolate, mink, etc., that means that the rat is black-based. If a rat is agouti-based, the terms generally change and they're now Russian blue agouti, chocolate agouti, cinnamon, etc. Learning these names is just another part of memorization when it comes to genetics. So now that that's out of the way, we're going to move on to the actual color loci and their abbreviations. For many of these color references, please see the AFRMA's page, which will be linked down below by color. While some of these images aren't the best, it's a quick and easy way to at least get an idea of the colors, and you can follow along while you listen. We're starting with the A locus, which as we know, is the agouti locus. Now we've talked about this one a bit already, but there's still just a little bit more to learn. This locus specifically controls the yellow pigment. In banded animals, a stripe of yellow occurs near the top of the hair shaft, giving agouti and agouti-based colors their telltale ticking. Black-based rats lack this yellow pigment and have solid colored hair shafts. Technically, only black-based rats can be considered selfs, which is that type of marking that doesn't have any kind of white on it. The animal is just one solid color. And a goodie based rat can't be a self rat because they're automatically never going to be a solid single color because of their banded hair shafts. Agoutis in that term are usually called unmarked. Now, when you see a dash, two capital A's, or capital A, lowercase a, all of these mean that the animal is a goody. The dash right here signals that the secondary allele on that locus is unknown. Now, if you see a a, or two lowercase a's, this animal is the recessive black. So next up is the B locus, or the brown locus. This locus determines if the eumelanin is black or brown in the hair shaft. Eumelanin is just a broad term for pigment. This is a recessive locus, and its resulting color on black-based animals is chocolate. So this two capital Bs means that there is no mutated allele at all. The capital B dash, no mutated allele, and we don't know what that second allele is going to be. This one means that the animal is carrying chocolate. And this one means that the animal is phenotypically chocolate. So next up would technically be the C locus, but we're skipping that one in this video because it's big enough that it will get its entire own video. Trust me, the C locus is an absolute beast. So next up is actually the D locus, which is the dilute locus. And this locus is for Russian blue. This locus causes color clumping, and that's responsible for that kind of heathering that is trademark of this variety. Um, a lot of newer breeders or newer people to the fancy mistake it for a goody ticking, and it's not. Um, it's a type of heathering. So just like every other recessive gene out there, two capital Ds means no mutated allele is present at all. Capital D dash means it's not a phenotypically Russian blue, but we don't know what that second allele is. Here, we're carrying Russian blue. And then this one, the animal is Russian blue. Um, so something to remember for these next two, for the D locus and the G locus, these are area specific. So in the UK, their D locus is actually something different from what the United States D locus is. It's still a type of blue, um, 
but it is a little bit different. So the next, we have the G locus or the gray locus. Um, and this is a recessive locus that causes the color American blue, um, also known as blue. In this one, there are different shade selections, so they can be bred to be lighter or darker. And you can see this in the AF AFRMA link that is down below. Just like every other recessive, we have the exact same scenario. So no mutated allele at all. We don't know if it exists. It's carrying. And then this animal is phenotypically American blue. So, and if any of you know me at all, it drives me absolutely crazy when people call blue rats gray. And then, of course, we go and we name the G locus the gray locus, but it's still not gray. It's blue. 